Hey everyone, welcome back to another Behind the Hype. Today we're talking about impact finance. My name's Ryan and I'm going to introduce Shireen now to, to tell us a bit more about our speakers and what we're talking about. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Hello, everyone. So today we're really excited to be covering another topic as part of the Behind the Hype sessions. And today we'll be speaking about impact finance. Um, we're really excited because this is uh, a session that we are jointly organizing with Jean-Guillaume from Natixis. Uh, Jean-Guillaume is MD financial sponsor at Natixis and he's also a green and impact finance enthusiast. So he will be our first speaker and he will give you an overview of um, the trends on the impact finance uh, space. Then we'll continue with uh, two fintechs. We'll first hear from Amin and Kamal, who are um, both co-founders of Only One, a positive impact neobank. Then we'll hear from uh, Marion and Grégoire, who are um, uh, from WeFin, a socially responsible investment platform. Grégoire is the co-founder and Marion is product marketing manager. So. Uh, now I'll hand it over to Jean-Guillaume to take you through an introduction to the impact finance space. Over to you, Jean-Guillaume. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks, Shireen and uh, Astra for inviting me. So I'm trying to today uh, discuss about the impact finance world and the relationship with fintechs. So impact finance, uh, it's a great space and a big space. Um, it will include uh, private equity funds, green funds, infrastructure funds, and also bankers investing and lending in uh, renewable finance, for instance. Okay. Um, I don't want to cover here uh, the world of a nonprofit uh, organization who have impact socially, but probably not on the environment. If you can switch to the next slide, Ryan. So, so far, what we've seen in my in my world, which I cover uh, green funds, also talk a lot to uh, technology specialists and fintechs, is that fintechs have great products and solutions, but they don't address sustainable finance, uh, green finance, or impact finance goals as such. They, they offer solutions for financial institutions like KYC, payments, but without including or without addressing sustainable impact goals as such. So that's true for most uh, developed markets. Uh, in emerging markets, we've seen uh, fintechs who are sometimes replacing or competing with banks and offerings like e-transfers, uh, digital platforms, digital wallets for like social payments. And uh, these are fintechs with impact, but it's more because the local countries have a lot of uh, environment and social goals that in place. Okay, um, but next slide, please. But the uh, potential developments developments are huge. Um, so I try to cover some development I'm seeing in the market um, to give you uh, a scope. Yeah, uh, the United Nations decided they have uh, 17 sustainable development goals. And they also appointed a digital task force to discuss the digitization of these so-called SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. And um, around the world, we detected a lot of initiatives um, that took in place, like uh, e-marketplaces where um, institutions or individuals can exchange uh, clean power or sustainable power uh, agriculture, uh, agriculture uh, assets, um, what we call biodiversity offsets. For instance, if you uh, are a carbon producer, at the same time trying to offset by planting trees, uh, ocean. So for green assets, you can have a marketplace, but you can also build an e-trading platform, which will be um, actually an e, a green e-trading platform. Um, another uh, very interesting uh, space is what are called ESG data analysis. So asset managers currently use a lot of providers for ESG analysis. I won't cover all these providers, but they are very numerous and different algorithms. 
So probably a space where fintechs invest is try to build a new taxonomy to try to build a new algorithm for uh, green asset managers to uh, work and invest more efficiently. Another area of development is crowdfunding. So crowdfunding meaning funneling and channeling and private investment into uh, green assets or climate action environment uh, for individuals, but also for professional investors. Okay, so in that field, I'm seeing a few uh, solutions, marketplaces, uh, websites, including in Europe that uh, actually um, channel investments to green assets. Initial uh, coin offerings, ICOs, that's potential developments, let's say uh, creating a digital currency that will only uh, be geared towards climate action. Another space, probably more conventional, especially in, in um, emerging markets, is smart cards and e-payments using mobile networks for humanitarian uh, action or financial inclusion. Um, I would also cover here the uh, digital wallets for a certain part of the population, like uh, teachers or students that need financing or women, especially in emerging markets. And the last, last one is not exactly like a fintech technology, but it's more like uh, for biodiversity or oceans using a metering technology. Um, so to conclude before um, probably we move to a discussion, um, what happened since we had the COVID-19 uh, crisis, it seems that the, the hype is growing, that most startups want impact uh, investors, entrepreneurs are trying to build projects that make sense. And uh, I truly believe that fintechs themselves can have uh, build solutions and uh, companies that have in the, uh, business models with impact. Thank you. Sorry, was speaking on mute. <laughs> um, so now that we've heard from uh, Jean Guillaume about the trends and opportunities in this space, um, let's continue now with uh, Amin from uh, Only One uh, to see what they've been doing as part of um, the Only One uh, neobank. Hi everyone, let me unmute myself. Let me just share my screen in a second. Yeah. I was on mute there. Just while you're loading up your can screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, you can ask questions throughout the session by commenting at the bottom and we'll have Q&A at the end. Uh, can you guys see my screen? We'll be showing now. So over Hello. to you. All good. Uh, we do see your screen now. Okay. So um, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us to you know to to talk about our journey so far. Um, it's it's um, it's going to be very much so in the con in continuity with uh, with what uh, Jean Guillaume was uh, was addressing now. Um, we have started this project. Um, 18 months ago, um, I, you know, basically we were we were we were looking at uh, starting a project that um, could be at the intersection of um, experiences and values. And um, and here's our story. Um, the reason we have um, the reason we uh, we've we've started this is. Um, we have seen how impact finance was um, was massively available um, through through large innovative solutions, but not necessarily to uh, to to the public, as in as in um, as in consumers. Um, and while um, while we've seen a large focus uh, on you know on organizations that were trying to square you know uh, their social and environmental impact, we wanted to. Um, uh, in a way, 
make it available uh, largely to the public um, and especially uh, in France, which is our launch market. Um, one, um, one thing that we've, we've noticed is there are massive amounts of, of, of savings um, that the French public has, um, 7 trillion plus, which are not necessarily um, being used in, um, I don't want to say the proper way, but like in a, in a tomorrow proof way. Um, and while traditional banks um, uh, have uh, ultimately, when we've seen, we've seen this in the last eight, eight, 18 months, have you know tried to, well, there's no way they're going to get away with uh, not being um, impact oriented or at least look at what their clients are looking for. Um, the the um, the, uh, the uh, our our conviction was that. Um, Climate change um, and its various nefarious effects needed to be addressed collectively, but we needed to give the public immediately actionable, uh, immediately actionable tools to address their lifestyle and to be able to adapt their lifestyle to uh, to the the and their banking lifestyle to uh, to their values. One of the first thing that um, um, that we were convinced of is that. Changing that your lifestyle or changing, uh, you know, um, um, adapting our lifestyle to 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 what we need to do um, um, is is not going to happen if we do not um, change what and how we transact. Um, and we've been we've been quite astonished to see that um, as a client of a of any financial institution in France, any like I have no say on what is being done with my money um, and when you when when you look at um, the expectations of um, you know of the of the public uh, in, in in France um, most of most of the users um, um, are expecting ready to use solutions um, most of the users are happy to adapt their lifestyle and we've seen it's it's like covid has been almost like a wake-up call to um to to point the obvious um and especially when you look at like the you know like the young generation the 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 um they want it all and when I say they want it all, the one thing that we've been seeing is that we've been we've been amazed of the transformation that uh, the the mobile disruptor have 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 delivered to the banking experience. And we thought, like, okay, that is going to that is going to at some point become the norm. I would expect Le Crédit Agricole to have an app that is the like of a Revolut. Um, in due course, um, but we thought that it was not enough, and that um, something was missing, and something would be, would be uh, critical in the way um, consumers are going to look at um, to look at banking. Is how aligned is my financial institution with my lifestyle and my values? And those two things led us to build uh, to build only one. Um, we, we 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 look at only one as a uh, a segue to behavioral change. So we uh, we in a way um, have built a, a, a neo bank, which is you know which was in stealth until uh, until um, early this year. We we've, we've recently secured funding and um, and regulatory ap approval, and we're launching a platform um, on four simple pillars. Um, uh, the first one is making sure or guaranteeing that th whatever money is deposited onto our account, um, we will make sure that it will not harm or it will not have a, um, a, a negative effect uh, on the environment. Um, support 
and uh, help our clients to understand their behavioral uh, or their consumption behavior and guide them in, uh, to, to, to do better. And when I say that, we're, we, we're building uh, two main components of our platform would be a, uh, a, you know, like a transaction scoring um, mechanism that is built in within the app that will help assess um, with, with, um, with what basically um, the, the, the science and the data will allow us to do in the most, uh, in the most precise way, what is the impact of each and every transaction that a client uh, uh, would do. Um, and because we feel that understanding the impact of what, what we buy will, uh, will, will be um, a, a, a great guidance to our client to say, okay, I could do better here. I could improve this um, and I could lower that. And if they can't, I could, I could offset this. Um, uh, our, our ambition uh, is to get our clients to, to lower their footprint by 75% uh, in the next three years. Um, and the fourth pillar, uh, which is, uh, which is um, how, we, how we can make sure that the, uh, there's, a, there's a, a clear or, or there's, a, there's, a, there's a bridge or a value exchange between, uh, between our clients, us, and, uh, and Positive Impact Project uh, is making sure that uh, a seamless um, bridge is created between a uh, project that we have vetted um, and, um, that, and that our clients support. And these can be local projects. And um, basically all of our projects will have to, uh, to tick the, the, the boxes of the, uh, the 17 um, uh, ob uh, you know, ob objectives for, um, uh, you know, that the UN has, uh, has, has, has laid out. Uh, the, um, the, uh, in, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, uh, you know, where, where we are today, we, um, we've been lucky enough to, uh, to, to sign like the first ever near bank, um, um, partnership with, um, a UN found uh, called Unit Life. Uh, we are going to um, allow our first client to support um, projects within, um, um, you know, within the fund. Th th this fund specializes in in, um, 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 in solving for um, um, children chronic, uh, mal you know, mal malnutrition, uh, and um, w which is a one of the direct impacts of um, um, climate change. Um, and uh, our focus is to work on many others, which we can't necessarily disclose today, but uh, we, we, we're trying to make it almost seamless for our clients to support projects that are aligned with what they want to do so that their impact is immediate and seamless. Um, and uh, supported uh, supported by us, uh, we have not launched yet. We expect this to happen sometimes this summer, um, and uh, and and you know, and hopefully we can uh, we can bring our uh, um, humble contribution to uh, to uh, to um, to the world of finance. Thanks a lot. And I'll uh, stop sharing my screen. <laughs> Thank you. That was really interesting. Um, I do have a lot of questions for you, but uh, maybe we'll get to the, the questions at the end. Um, before that, let's hear from uh, the WIFIN uh, team. So, uh, Grégoire and Marion. Oh, Gregoire, you're on mute. Uh, and Marion, your slides will be coming up soon as well. Okay, it should be better now. I loved when the when the previous speaker went on mute. Uh, I've made the same mistake. <clears throat> okay, so hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you today for this session on impact finance. I'm Gregoire, and I'm Wifin's co-founder. 
Um, first of all, I would like to thank Finastra for the invitation and uh, thanks as well to the first two speakers for their inspiring uh, presentation. I'm here with Marion, product manager at Wifin, to introduce you ESG Connect. So ESG Connect is our data platform, which aims is to foster sustainable finance. So before leaving the floor to Marion, a few words on Wifin. Wifin is a young startup. We are French, which is probably not a surprise given my accent. And we are a fintech specialized in sustainable finance. Our particularity is that we are a hybrid fintech. So what does it mean? Um, it means that we are helping our clients with both uh, technology and advisory missions. So our clients are professional investors. And from our point of view, having both activities combined is a strength for us to better understand their issues. And it's precisely by helping these professional investors managing ESG data internally during several advisory missions that we realized how ESG data management is tough and how this ESG data management is a barrier for professional investors to measure their ESG impact, so their sustainable finance impact. And that's where we've decided to develop ESG Connect. So I'll let Marion introduce you the platform and explain to you what kind of issue we've tried to solve precisely to better help our clients when we've developed uh, the platform. Thanks, Grégoire. Um, so, as Grégoire has just told you, we combined our expertise in sustainable finance and technology to uh, develop our tool that empowers uh, financial actors to improve their impact. So, for investors and asset managers, they really want to control their impact and impact finance used to be a good to have, but now we can definitely say it's a must have. Um, and as we can see with the figures, uh, responsible investing has become a top industry priority. Uh, we can see that global sustainable investment reached over $30 trillion, um, which is huge. So if the clients and the industry are ready, um, what's the problem then? So we can see that uh, the main barriers for ESG integration is lack of data, cost of technology, and advanced analytical skills. So if we focus on the biggest one, which is lack of data, um, we can see that first, um, investors at the beginning, they struggle to find relevant information uh, to take investment decisions. So, for example, if we think about CO2 emissions, um, there are really few companies that report on their indirect em emissions, uh, which can be transportation or the emissions that are done while the product is used, for example. So, therefore, this, this makes it really difficult to calculate the impact of the investments. Uh, secondly, there is no data standard. So you can find uh, data in various places. So you can buy it from data providers. You can read companies' reports. Uh, you can check the news as well. But therefore, the quality is really heterogeneous. And if we go back to the example of uh, carbon footprints, uh, the scope within which companies report their footprint varies widely. And then the comparison is difficult. So the consequence of, the, of this um, is that it's really hard to analyze data. So ESG analysts, they're really losing their time and they're doing low added value tasks, which shouldn't be actually the job. So um, then how is this a problem concretely? So most data issues, they are overlooked by data providers. They try to create clean data sets uh, for investors. But the way we look at it at Wefin is really different. So as you can see, um, asset managers and asset owners, uh, they, they increasingly implement their ESG investment strategy. Um, but to create their own KPIs, indicators, or ratings, they need to 
as Jean-Guillaume said at the beginning, they need to have several data providers. Um, so sometimes they have one gen who is generalist, and then they need more information about climate change, for example. So they will have another data provider or for the social parts, if they need to know, have more information about gender equality. Um, and sometimes even data providers don't have all the information. So they have to go and check by themselves, uh, reading companies reports, checking the news, and it's really time consuming. So actually it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, they all have to collaborate together. Often one asset manager can have several data providers and one asset manager can have several um, asset owners as clients. So they're not working on the same data standards. Uh, even as you can see on the screen, um, even on the same company, the different teams are not working on the same standards and they don't have the same strategy. So this makes collaboration really hard. So the way we, we look at it with ESG Connect is we want to help investors to handle ESG in its globality. Uh, we want to give power back to investors and asset managers to allow them controlling the impact. So we're really convinced that tomorrow's finance must be built today and that technology is the key. So with the ESG Connect, we want to put ESG at the center of each financial decision. So as you can see, we want to connect data, actors, and teams together. So how is this con concretely working? Um, so first, we aggregate all the data sources. So then um, investors can perform data checking, data consolidation, and then they have access to structured data as well as unstructured data from their internal or external sources. And we use artificial intelligence to um, make the most of unstructured data. For example, they can analyze meeting notes, annual reports um, of the issuers. We also want that um, SI um, be aligned with the company's values. So they can explore the metrics, on the platform, they can anticipate pot potential impacts, new trends on their portfolios um, using machine learning and espe especially predictive analytics. And lastly, the the main um, the main um, the main goal is to allow collaboration between all the actors, and then extra financial analysis can be done on the platform. They can exchange. Uh, co-create in real time and all the stakeholders are at the same place. Um, as you can see on the right graph, then thanks to our tool, um, uh, ESG analysts, they're not losing their time anymore and they can focus on the core job, which is analysis. Um, maybe it's still a bit abstract at this point, so um, maybe we can watch a quick video and then you can see uh, better how our platform works. The technology to bring extra financial transparency to investment strategy. Public and government's concern over environmental and social issues, which is records all around the world. With the new regulations, financial institutions must act fast. Financial services must rethink their strategy but are still monopolized by low value added tasks. ESG analysts struggle doing their work because of a wide ESG data offer, unadapted data providers, lack of tools, and heterogeneous data quality. With ESG Connect, gather all your data in one place, create your own ESG scoring methodology, monitor and make simulations. Run customized simulations based on ESG indicators. Match your targets. Find the top scored securities. Instantly see the impact in your financial portfolio. and compare security to your investment universe.
slow your ESG data setup to the more granular level. Don't wait, ask for a demonstration. Okay, thank you, Marion. I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation. To conclude, uh, um, uh, we'll be very happy, Marion and I, to answer any of your questions. As said in the video, don't hesitate to ask for a demonstration of the platform. Um, so we are only at the beginning of our journey for ESG Connect. We are very motivated to develop a, a strong platform to help professional investors take the power back and better use their ESG data. We are strongly think that this is a way to foster sustainable finance, that this is the only way uh, to allow investors to create better impact finance solutions. And we are very happy to have the, this opportunity to present that today to you. Ryan, thanks. And I think we are ready for the for the question. Thanks a lot, Grégoire and Marion. That was really interesting. Um, Ryan, can I start with the first question? <laughs> yes, I, I'm going to bring everyone back onto the screen so you, we can have an open Q&A. As a reminder for everyone watching, you can ask a question by um, typing in the comments section below and we'll get them. So over to you, Shireen. Thank you. Um, I do actually have a question for um, Marion and Grégoire. As you mentioned, uh, data management, and we saw um, a couple of screenshots during the video. Do you also offer any machine learning um, uh, analytics based on the data that you provide to, um, to your customers? Yep. So today, machine learning, and especially NLP, technology is helping us to better um, use qualitative data sets. So in sustainable finance, you have uh, metrics, for example, carbon footprints, but you also have uh, reports, so company reports, um, analyst notes, and a lot of uh, text that contains a lot of information that is very insightful for ESG analysts. And we use technology and machine learning to better extract this data and help them to use it. Cool, thank you. I think we've got another question from you on um, on the YouTube live um, about the data uh, sources. So what sources of data would you recommend that company companies collect and um, how would that data be clean so that decisions are made on correct data? Um, yep, tough question. Um, regarding data set first, um, usually investors will have a dedicated data set depending on um, the category of ESG investment they are doing. So for example, they will have a dedicated providers for climate, a dedicated providers for social issues, and probably a provider that is very uh, broad and that cover uh, in general several issues. So our goal is to connect all these sources to make sure that um, they they can use them. Um, but uh, there is not one clear answer today, which is probably a, an issue in the market. Um, it's not possible to say that one data provider is better than the other and that he, the, the offers that they've developed will fit all investor needs, depending on what kind of investment solutions they are running, uh, the data provider will change. So in France, for example, we have uh, um, several climate specialists like Carbon4, which are great. Uh, in the US, there are there is TrueCost, for example, that is, uh, that is as well a, a, a great provider. Uh, and people really need to look at the data sets and compare them based on their use case, then make sure that they are buying the best one. 
And after buying these data sets, clearly in EAG Connect, what we do is that we clean them, we connect them with their financial portfolios, because usually they are, it's not an, an easy task. And we make sure that all their EAG data sources can be compared, can be combined, so that they use them with the most efficient way. Cool, thank you. Um, I think we've got another question this time for uh, Jean-Guillaume about um, climate change related risk. Um, Jean-Guillaume, how do you see banks uh, managing the climate change related risk today? Jean-Guillaume, do you hear us? Okay, it looks like there is some um, issue. Pro uh, for the others, do you still hear me? I can hear. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Maybe let's continue with another question and we'll get back to Jean-Guillaume later. Um, Actually, uh, one th uh, something that uh, Jean Guillaume mentioned in the um, in his presentation earlier was about the COVID impact of um, and how it is making uh, impact finance even more important. I wanted to ask uh, both Twiffin and um, only uh, you uh, teams here. Um, do you see uh, do you see that change uh, due to COVID? Do you see more interest, higher interest, or is it too early? <laughs> Yeah, I can take this one. Um, um, we we haven't launched, so we are not seeing an, an effective client um, change um, as we speak. But all of the conversations that um, um, that we're having with with you know with our pre subscribers or the community or um, lead to lead us to believe that there's a there's a before and an after. Um, um, COVID when it comes to, okay, um, what are we going to do? And are we go going to do exactly the same? Are we going to live exactly the way, the way, uh, the way we used to? Are we going to bank exactly? Are we going to transact exactly the way we, we did? Um, Jean-Guillaume mentioned um, um, a change in the way um, um, angels or, you know, like institutions were uh, investing in, uh, in, you know, in, in, in startups and companies. Um, we are seeing also a, a bit of traction uh, and a bit of interest uh, in, you know, in, in that matter. So I think it's too early to say, um, and, but it's, it's definitely going in that direction. Cool, thank you. Yep. Uh, Gregor, do you want to take it from your perspective as well? Yeah, 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 sure. On our, on our perspective, the COVID has not slowed the sustainable finance project. Um, we have more and more clients asking demo for the platform. And actually, the, the lockdown was uh, the occasion for us to, to, to run several demonstrations where uh, professional investors were pretty interested by the, by the platform. But um, what is sure is that the way sustainable finance is handled today will probably change and that um, uh, people will have to include more social issues um, because today sustainable finance and, and, and the, the search for impact is mostly focused on climate change, on, on environment, biodiversity, and we can see here with the COVID issue that there is a social pillar uh, that really needs to be taken into account. We see that with uh, issues with, uh, with, with Amazon and people not willing to work uh, during, the, during the lockdown and other issues like that. So it's clearly um, an area that I believe investors will uh, We'll, we'll go after after the COVID, but um, um, I, I definitely don't think it will be slowed. Uh, actually, most studies uh, 
done during COVID showed that uh, sustainable finance uh, strategies uh, were pretty resilient during the crisis and that this strategy helped investors to uh, keep more money during the during the the, the bank the, the financial crisis the market crisis so i think it's a strong indicator that will help sustainable finance to to, to, to develop uh, the future cool thank you that's really interesting um I have another question for uh, Amin and Kamel on the um, on the one team. Um, I was actually wondering how do you measure um, the impact or um, how positive or negative a, a given transaction is? Can you share with us a little bit more about how how that would work? Yeah, that's a good. That's a that's a really good one. So um, we. Um, <clears throat> We're tapping into um, into multiple publicly uh, available and also databases that um, um, that give us knowledge of levels of impact of a transaction. So we're building our we're, we're, there, there are multiple scoring algorithms out there, but we're building our own. Um, but we don't want we don't want the 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 impact to be the the core component of uh, of our platform the way the way we see it is we need to be able to nudge the the positive behavior as opposed to flag a, uh, a behavior that is definitely going to be um perfectible when you connect your account to any calculator so I think our lifestyle, the, the reason the reason we have only one as a name is that we we you know we were thinking, let's 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 build a platform that will help people um, um, operate in a way where one planet is enough uh, to sustain all of us, um, and you know and 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 therefore only one. The um, the There is no way today to have a, 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 a life cycle understanding of what the impact of a product is. So um, we don't want, we didn't want to give um, um, our users a, a, a false promise of we are going to tell you exactly what um, a, um, um, a zero carbon footprint bank account is going to look like. But we are going to lead you there by trying to pinpoint where you could do better and uh, where you have been doing good compared to the 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 overall only one community and compared to um, our level of understanding of what's act actually actionable in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, in, you know impact impact scoring. Yeah, thank you. So keeping it positive and encouraging customers. That's that's really good. Um, I see that we have Jean-Guillaume back now. Uh, do you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Cool. Perfect. So we actually have a couple of questions for you. The first one is, um, how do you see banks uh, managing the climate change related uh, risk? Wow. Um... <laughs> Well, I mean, regarding the traditional activities, you know, like banks are exiting uh, fossil energies, like financing coal, first stage, now more and more um, uh, exiting oil and gas, uh, it's for its second step. Um, for, if I take the, the example of the, the bank I work for in Texas, we created a great weighting factor the green weighting factor is trying to calculate if uh, in our portfolio of loans, uh, the level of green and non-green activities. So now we are in a position of, uh, from a portfolio standpoint and future production of loans uh, to know exactly what we're lending to. So it's a green weighting factor, that's an example. Um, Another one is, is also traditional, is lending to uh, the energy transition. 
uh, obviously renewables, wind farms, uh, solar energy, all that. Uh, what else? And then you have the non non banking activities like more. It will be more charity, um, uh, charity like foundations in France. Uh, where you say you have an impact, it could be social or environment, or like empower employees, etc. I don't know if I answered your question. Cool, thank you. Uh, it's, it's indeed a difficult question. <laughs> there is a second one uh, that is actually uh, for you. Uh, not sure if you'd like to take it or if uh, Grégoire or Marion can take it as well. So it's about um, how do you calculate the carbon footprint for your customer's portfolio? Well, maybe quickly, I, I can. I don't have the exact formula, but we 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 using what we call the green weighting factor, which is a very complicated uh, uh, tool. Um, so, but basically, we are. It, it's a mix of. Um, independent analysis and and looking through the the annual reports of uh, the clients we're lending to to uh, look at the carbon footprint yeah maybe to, to, to add something to that on our side usually our clients which are not banks but uh, insurers or asset managers uh, they invest in in companies through equities or bonds and usually the way they calculate their carbon footprint, their financial carbon footprint, is by understanding what is the carbon footprint of companies. And when they do that, they consider first the direct emission of companies. So, for example, if you are a car manufacturer, um, the, the carbon footprint implied by the production of, of a car. Uh, then they also calculate the non-direct emission. So that would be the carbon emissions when you use the car, so not directly the company itself, but uh, the carbon footprint linked to the usage of the product or even uh, downstream uh, before the product was built. And um, more companies are not trying to calculate avoided emissions as well. Because here we are talking only on the negative impact. But if you look at the bright side and the positive impact, you can also invest in solutions that will help to um, solve the issue of carbon footprint. So in that case, what you will try to calculate is the emissions avoided by the creation of this product. It can be a wind wall, for example. And uh, what our clients do is that they aggregate the carbon footprints of all their companies into their financial portfolios, with simple sum, and uh, and they try to manage that and to keep at, at to keep it as low as possible. Cool. Thank you. Um... As we have you back, Sean, Guillaume, I'll continue with another question yet for you. Um, during your presentation earlier, uh, you shared with us a lot of uh, really interesting trends and areas of uh, where we see impact finance initiatives. Um, what's your, uh, what's, what would be your favorite one? Or like, if you were to invest, where, where would you put your money? Where, what do you think is the most promising one? I think number I would say number one uh, data, ESG data. I think someone um, is probably Gregoire mentioned it. Uh, I mean, basically uh, the financial world uh, is 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 there are so many providers. So we need to improve uh, data analysis. That's number one. Uh, the second will be second and third will be crowdfunding and traceability. Maybe it was not on my slide, but this we need to have more. Um, we need to know where we invest. Uh, I mean, we need to know what the impact. We all, all talk about impact, but what's the real impact on like biodiversity or, or agriculture, 
uh, oceans. Um, we need tools that's where technology can help to trace the impact of our investment. Before investment, what happened, and post investment, what was the impact of that investment, right? So if you invest for $500 million in Indonesia, in the forest, I mean, you know uh, what's the impact, I mean, one or two years after. Um, so ESG data, crowdfunding, and traceability. Crowdfunding is also because we, we, we want to see more uh, financial flows into uh, sustainable finance. And um, uh, as uh, Amin said, uh, also probably the in individuals, uh, individuals want to know where they invest their money. It has to be to something uh, into something sustainable or to, into uh, green funds. And uh, that's channeling, not only raising money to sustainable projects, but also funneling that money into a real sustainable project. Not, not only, uh, okay, uh, uh, one third of my savings are into uh, so-called green mature funds, and I don't have no clue what's behind it, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so being able to measure and trust uh, what we measure and for that data is definitely is definitely key. Um, so I think we covered uh, we covered many topics here. We've um, we're really happy to to have both um, Jean Guillaume's insight on uh, on the trends of the area, impact finance, green finance, what's happening, um, what are the trending topics. And um, we've also seen uh, two really interesting examples with only one, the neobank focusing on impact uh, for consumers and making it positive for them to help them um, change behavior, uh, as well as um, the ESG data platform we've seen um, which is definitely the number one topic for Jean Guillaume, and I, I do believe uh, that is also a very a very interesting topic here as well. Um, back to Ryan, uh, do you see any additional questions from the audience? Hey, um, just a very quick one to end it. Um, what are your thoughts on how banks and fintechs and insurers, so financial services? Uh, the traditional banks insurance work closely with fintech so what are some top tips that you've had in terms of your interactions and that's an open question to anyone uh, so on our side bank insurance yeah, managers these are our clients so we definitely are trying to make the collaborations between banks and fintechs uh, working um, this is uh, on our side a, a great collaboration given the fact that we are using internally a technology and we have an, an agility that usually most uh, big uh, institutions don't have. So we do believe that uh, the collaboration can work uh, and um, that uh, investment teams would, who are usually very expert in what they invest in ESG teams who are usually very expert in sustainable issues can benefit from this technology. Um, then when it comes to practical collaborations, there are, of course, a lot of challenges. Um, of course, we are smaller than banks for now. And um, we it's, it's a challenge for big institutions for, to work with small companies like, like us. So it can usually take time to build a, a trust relationship and to, um, to, 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 to build a case where they are confident enough to invest in, in a small company like us. And from our side, uh, regarding only one, um, when we are starting to, to, to talk about a project or, or new bank, uh, we have been contacted by some large bank to, to look how we can collaborate regarding the, you know, the scoring impact or, or the different uh, solution or features we are proposing to our customer. And, and uh, in the near future, we, we think that all the technology we are creating can be used uh, for, for the large bank 
to because they they are in the same uh, the same way to to change um, you know the the way of banking. So uh, I think in the future it will be a, will be co corroborating with uh, with this uh, this kind of institution. Cool. Thank you so much for everyone for joining. Uh, it's been a really great session. Uh, a reminder to viewers, we are continuing these sessions. Our next one is on um, Treasury Explained, so understanding more about the role of Treasury within a bank. And with that, I'll, I'll just say goodbye and see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ryan.